It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host, and I am always just excited to spend this morning with you on Sunday morning, you know, 94.1 on your radio dial. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show, I say. It's a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. We have a few rules. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine, but we do always speak well of one another. And we've done that now for 1,059 shows today. And uh, I'm excited to be able to talk about our veterans today. Uh, Barry Walker is my guest, and uh, he has founded a ministry called Warriors Restoration. Brother Barry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jack. It's good to be here this Sunday morning. It's good to have you here and uh, talk about veterans, and I'm assuming that you are a veteran. Yes, sir. Okay. From the Marine Corps and the Army. The Marine Corps and the Army. Now, I would understand why anybody would want to lead the Marines, <laughs> but <laughs> why would you go to the Army? I mean, well, you're right there near the Navy. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to avoid the ships, Jack. <laughs> no, you, you just weren't into the ships. Huh? <laughs> so what did you do in the, in, in the military? I was a... Uh, Helicopter mechanic, uh, a tank crewman in the reserves, and then a op- aviation operations chief uh, in the Marine Air Wing. Okay, so they they moved you around a little bit. Yes, sir. But uh, you so you've had some experience with the with the helicopters. Yes, sir. And uh, I've heard people talk about the, the flying and helicopter. Now you didn't fly; you just worked on them, right? I worked on it. I, I flew. I flew in them, though. You flew in them, yes, but sir. you didn't fly them. No, no. Yeah. But but they tell me it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> never did get up in one. I, I was around them a lot, but I never, you know, we, we watched them take off from the ship all the time. <laughs> but I never had a chance to get in one. And I don't know uh, what does that feel like up there with all that rotation going around and things. It feels loud and vibrating. Is it? <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Wow. I mean, did, the first time you did it, did you feel a little queasy? Not at all. No. You felt right at home doing that. Oh, yes, sir. And that was that in the Marines or in the Army? That was in the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps. Okay. So what made you decide to change from the Marines to the Army? I got selected for Army War Officer flight training uh, when I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Um, I'd always wanted to fly. I was in Civil Air Patrol as a kid. Um, and that was pretty much my only shot at flying was if I went to the Army. Is that right? Yes. Sir. So about at what time in your career did you make the change? Probably about my... I think it was about my ninth year in the Marine Corps. And then you said, how long were you in the Army? Uh, I was in for a year. I got my foot crushed in a work detail. Oh. And uh, they, they gave me the choice of getting out or, or uh, staying in. And I said, let me get out because I, okay. I wanted to be in the, flying if I was in the Army. I see. Okay. So you only had just a short period of time in, in the Army. Yes, sir. So did it take you a, a while to get used to the different uniform? Uh, not the different uniform, just the different way of doing business. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about that. That, that, that. This has got to be interesting. Well, it's just a different mentality, uh-huh. uh, just a, a different way of operating. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, if you're used to the Marine Corps and and you, you for nine years, and then you go over to a different branch, and you're only there for a little bit, it's it's just a different way of doing things. I would imagine that it would be quite a shock to go from the Navy, e- either to the Marines or. Um, Army, of course. And when you're in the Navy, you're around Marines some, so you're somewhat familiar with the Marines. Well, and the Marines love their corpsmen. We, we love a good doc. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and something else, you talk about people that you want to make sure you take good care of. Two people that I'm familiar with, I spent some time on the mess deck, so you don't want to mess with the cooks. <laughs> and you don't want to mess with a photographer. Now you say, well, why would that be? Because if you lose your ID card, you've got to have a new picture on the new one. Now, we can do that real quick. Or that could be a process, <laughs> and so you don't want to mess with the, with the, with, the, with the photo guys. <laughs> so, okay, so now you're you're out of the military, and uh, you have this heart for veterans. What's that all about? Well, I was uh, I, I also worked at the VA for a while. I just recently retired from there. Um, while I was there, I learned uh, I worked with the HUD Vash, the homeless uh, veteran uh, program. Uh, as the as their IT guy, and uh, I learned that they couldn't house 
every, all the veterans and they needed long term housing for the a lot of the the chronically homeless veterans and that's just what we decided we needed to help them with. Okay. So the name of your ministry is Warriors Restoration. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when I see the word restoration, I'm thinking about somebody who's maybe uh, challenged some way because they've gotten into some kind of an addiction or something of that nature. Is, is, are we dealing with areas like that, or is it just strictly we're looking to make sure they got a place to live? Uh most of it is probably going to be the, the the marine or the the, the the service members coming out of the out of jail. We're going to do a lot of reentry, uh, okay, okay. Uh, training uh, and and help. Uh, a lot of them will be still probably addicted to drugs. Uh, mm-hmm. As much as the the guards in the prison try to right. keep the drugs out, there's still drugs there. So, so when you're talking about a restoration, we really are talking about whatever they're dealing with. It's not just a matter of trying to find them a place to live. Now, where are we in the in our work so far? How, how long have you been doing this? What have you learned? Where are we at? We just started up. Uh, we, we got our first application for uh, for a shelter uh, probably about a week ago. Um, and unfortunately, he's still in jail, and the probation uh, system won't let him come to our area. So yeah. we've had to deny him, but we're, we're looking for veterans that, uh, that need housing. It could either be they're homeless or could they be either still in jail or coming out of jail or just got out of jail? Now, you have used the expression we. So who's we? Uh, we've got a board of directors, and then I've got a, a partner uh, with Care of Tallahassee that, that they're going to let us put some veterans there is until that, we get our own place. Is that Glenn Burns? Uh, no, that is uh, Bob Rumbly. Bob Rumbly? Yeah. Had, yeah. Been on the show here. <laughs> <laughs> Great now, guy. Yeah. He, they, Great they, program. Yeah, now, are you uh, working with them over there on uh, near Airport Drive? Over uh, there? Epps and, Drive. Is Epps Drive. Yes, sir. Yeah. That little hotel. <laughs> yes, thing, sir. Which amazes me. Every time I go by there, I go. And of course, I, of course, I've had him on the show. I've heard the story of how it all came about. But it's just such a little tiny place there. I don't know how many people they got living in. <laughs> and they're, they're packed in there. Yeah, and I, yeah. that, we're, 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 we're trying to do something about that as well. Now, did you know him before? Before you start this no i didn't I actually uh i knew uh, I, go, I do prison ministry as well with okay. harvest of life ministries okay and uh through that i met bob okay. and uh we're also going to start mentoring uh we're going to go into the prisons and do mentorship okay so this uh burden that you have really started when you worked for the va yes sir because you you saw the need as such as I, I did the homeless veteran stand downs with uh i'd go out and help them set up their computers and and get them networked out there um and that's kind of where i started learning more and more about okay. the situation of these veterans. homeless veterans stand down yes sir now what's that about um at the fairground there was at the fairgrounds but i think they're doing it at famu this year coming up um they they have a they have a, a dental clinic come out. They have uh, different providers. They even have a veterinarian there for the homeless veterans to uh, get the care at. Okay. So this is an event. Yes, sir. About. Say it again. What's the name of it? The the Homeless Veterans Stand Down. The Homeless Veterans Stand Down. Yes, sir. And that happens, what, once a year? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, who's putting that together? I think that's Vet Events Tally. Okay. And the and the VA participates and gives them a grant. Well, they, I they need the money. to. They need to be here. <laughs> well, I can work with uh, you to get them here. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've heard of vet events tally, but I've never had him on the radio show. Here. Okay. So so we need to work on getting them here because we, because uh, I like to give people information. And if you've got an event like that going on, then this is the place you need to be. Well, let's get them here. <laughs> because we can help you. So so you're involved in that, and you helped them set up the IT for, for that event. For the, yeah. the VA, yes, sir. For the VA. And then you, you just see the whole thing. And I think that most people are not aware of what's going on with our veterans in our community. Um, there's, there's a lady by the name of Pat Smith, and she has a ministry, uh, Pat's Pantry. And Pat was is a woman who just was she just lost her job one day hmm. <laughs> and she was coming up off the uh, I-10 ramp and she saw a man standing there with a sign that said he was hungry. But when she read the sign, it said, Pat, I'm hungry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so she called Scott Beagle at the Faith Radio. And we're sharing with him with him this on the radio. And next thing you know, a whole ministry was born because he put it out of the news. People start bringing stuff. But her focus, one of her focuses is the veterans. And she finds them. 
They're living up underneath the bridges. They're living all kinds of places. And uh, she'll take them, these, anything that's like in a, in a can where you can just pull the lid off and, and feed them like that. And she's, she's out there. Now, right now, I just talked to her here a few weeks ago. She's having some kind of surgery on her feet or knees or something. So she's kind of out of commission temporarily. <laughs> but she having her on the show and having her tell me and tell this radio audience what's going on out there that most of us are totally unaware of, that veterans, a lot of them have post-traumatic stress disorder. And so they're just they're, 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 they're hiding and they really can't face society. And so they don't want to go out and get food. So you have somebody like her that, that brings it to you. So That's awesome. It sounds like I need to get to know her. Well, absolutely. <laughs> and maybe we could give up on that as well. So, but now the event that you were talking about where you went to, you wouldn't necessarily have, you would not have had an, uh, a vet at that extreme probably because he probably wouldn't want to come there. But there were others who came. So what did you see? Uh, I saw a lot of people that are appreciative of uh, what's going on and what what they're doing to help them. We did see a lot that were very socially distant, mm-hmm. um, but they wouldn't do any care of some sort, uh, dental care, right? Uh, medical care. Uh, the VA would actually have uh, doctors there okay. and nurses, so uh, they would they would give them whatever they needed. I was talking to somebody at the VA, <laughs> and uh, they were telling me that. You know, of course, you, you, our, our World War II veterans are, we're, you know, they're getting older now, and we're starting to lose them. The World War One vets are pretty much gone now. So we have the Korean vets and the Vietnam, and then there's the Gulf War vets. And for what I was told, I said, this is a totally different world, <laughs> what they're dealing with with a lot of the vets that have come back from um, – Iraq, Afghanistan, dealing with an enemy that you don't necessarily know who they are, <laughs> and uh, a lot of the uh, emotional disturbances that they're dealing with now is different than Vietnam, and which were all very, very serious things. A lot of the Vietnam veterans, uh, they they had so many issues that they had to deal with that now they're, they've come back to America and they're dealing with, with it through their entire life. And uh, and I know the VA is there to help, but they're not able to do everything. So we have ministries like yours that's raising up. So this is totally a vision of yours. I wouldn't say it's my vision. It's what God gave me. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. But you've gotten other people involved with you. Yes, sir. How did that happen? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I asked a lot of my the people I know from church. Uh, I know I've asked people, a, a guy that uh, left the VA, um, I've asked him to be on our board of directors. Yeah. So I, I think there's only one non-veteran on our board. Really? And he just happens to be the president of the board, but uh-huh. everybody else is a veteran that's involved okay. with it. And then was there a particular reason why you would choose a non-veteran? Yeah, he, he has the ability to tell me no when I'm not doing right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he keeps me straight. That's fair. That, that's, that's a fair response to that. Um, now, what about financing what you're doing? Yeah. We're 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 raising some funds, but we need some help. You know, okay. uh, one of the we've gotten a, a Walmart's helped us out. Uh, uh, Smith Plumbing Company's helped us out. Okay. Uh, Marpan's helping us out with a, a with a dumpster for a cardboard ra- road race that we're doing. Uh, we're just trying to raise funds however we can. Okay. So now, in your vision, <laughs> do you see a an actual physical dwelling? Oh yes, sir. We what what. God's given me a vision for is uh, a lot of these veterans have a hard time getting a job. They have a hard time being social like we just talked about. Um, so what, what the vision I've got is that we would have a farm with tiny homes on it so that they can can show that they're working. The, the farming is very ther- therapeutic for them. Um, and being out in the, in the country away from the city uh, speaks a lot to the, a lot of veterans. Hmm. A farm with tiny houses on it. Yes, That's, sir. I, I could see that working. <laughs> and some of these veterans uh, can't get, uh, they don't have a, the, the ability to pay for uh, a retirement community. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the visions we've got is that we'll have two bedroom tiny homes so that a younger veteran can help take care of an older veteran okay. in exchange for reduced rent. Wow, you've, you've, uh, you've got quite a vision here. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's just, it's just, I think it's something that just kind of needs to be said. Because as we're, we're talking these things, it would almost seem like it, every veteran is having all kinds of problems and stuff like that. And that's not necessarily true. Uh, no, uh, sir, not at all. There's a percentage. And I don't, I don't know what that percentage is. And, and it may be fairly small. But it doesn't matter if the needs are there. They need to be addressed some way or another. And um, like I say, I'm, I'm one of those. I hear a lot of times veterans complain about the VA, and I'm not one of them. That's good. <laughs> you know, because to me, uh, they take good care of me. I mean, I go out, I go out there. They, I, I, well, my doctor just retired, but uh, uh, they do. And, and I've had a good experience with the VA. But but not everybody would, would say that. But even in the best of intentions and best of desires, there's some of these areas that they're going to fall through, that people are going to fall through. And sometimes it's because they don't want to be involved. And I know that, that myself, w- when I got out of the military, <laughs> I didn't want to be involved in anything that had anything to do with the military. <laughs> and I, it was years before I finally decided to get involved with the VA. And uh, it's... It, you know, because I had an image in my mind that it would you go out there, it's going to be just like being back in the Navy again. <laughs> and I didn't want that. But it's not. Not at all. People there are they're kind and compassionate. And I'm going to tell you something. It's different today than it was even five years ago. That's just, fair. Just by my experience. Yes, sir. Now, you can tell me why that happened. But I'm going to tell you, it changed. <laughs> and... Uh, um, it, uh, it just it, okay. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. I go out there now, and it just seems like that there's a different demeanor toward me, the vet. <laughs> now I don't know how long you worked there. So I've worked there for probably about eight years. Eight years, and uh, there the services that we have now are a lot different than what we had back eight years ago. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what the new clinic. If you haven't been out there, you need it's to go beautiful. look at it. Yeah. It's beautiful. That the staff there are just awesome to deal with. Um, I heard horror stories coming out of the Marine Corps and the Army, and uh, you know, and I didn't know what to expect. But uh, when I've gone there to the VA for veteran care, it's been nothing but great. Yeah, I've had great experiences yeah. there, and the, the services at this new clinic are just phenomenal, and the staff are phenomenal. So, do you think it was just the changing of location that made the difference? I, th- I think, I think so. I, I really do. I the and the staff were great at the old clinic and a lot of them are still there yeah but the uh the facility i think just was it, worn out and it didn't it, need it, a it was cramped hall. it was very cramped yes. so you were there you oh Phillips. yes sir so you were, you moved with the transition i got so. care there before i was in the in the va <laughs> working for the va so yeah. yes sir. yeah okay so so you're you're familiar with that well and i don't know it may have been i think it had a lot to do with administration myself but uh well uh, we must be talking about the a different administration, yeah. but yeah, yeah. the the the, stat, the the administration when I was w- w- got into the VA was a, was outstanding. Uh, we had a lot of great administrators. They were, I think, we were missing a CMO at the time I got there, but uh, the, the administrative officer was yeah. great. Well, I, I'll say this: uh, we'll we'll move on from this. If you are a veteran and you have not decided to use the VA services, I would encourage you to do so, but be aware. That it will take you a while to get in the system. I think it took me about a year from the time that I signed up to to, to actually I could actually go and have things done. It was about a year. But again, now this when was been, that? I've been going to the VA now probably twenty years, I guess. Okay, yeah, it's changed a lot. Yeah, yeah. they're very quick about it now. Yeah. Um, I I I'm pretty sure that if you go in and you register, you can probably see somebody the same day if you need to. Really. I, wow. I believe so. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, the staff at this clinic is just awesome. They're phenomenal. They yeah. they really care about you. Maybe it's because they had you come as an IT guy. <laughs> and you I can't fi- take credit for you, this, Jack. <laughs> and you fixed all the problems in the computers. <laughs> I definitely cannot take okay. credit for that. Right. But nevertheless, you having uh, been at the VA, and going to some of these events that took place, you began to recognize the, the the needs. But you, as you talk about your vision, you say, "Well, God gave you this vision." Tell us about that. How did, how did God deal with you about this? God just put something in my heart, and I can't quantify it with anything in particular. But God said, "You need to ask what you can do to help these homeless veterans." Okay, and 
I asked and I was told that they need more long care uh, housing facilities. Uh, the VA has uh, vouchers for some of them, but some of the veterans, they can't help. And and that's where we step in and try to do what okay. we can for them. Okay. Now, you mentioned um, veterans coming out of prison. And so and you're also involved in prison ministry. So you've been there. You've met veterans. Do you see any association between the fact that they ended up in prison and their service in the, in the military? Um, some of them, yeah. I think some of them with the, with the TBI, the traumatic brain injury, and uh, just some of them going through depression. Uh, you know, they they do stupid stuff sometimes, uh-huh. um, and and they just get in trouble and. That, that's, that's how it now, starts. Now, I know that that's a question that's asked a lot at the VA about depression, about um, suicide uh, thoughts and tendency. They ask that question quite a bit. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you think that that's related to, especially with a veteran that's been in battle or war? Oh, definitely. But, you know, even if you haven't been there, you can still go through depression. It's It's a real thing that – uh, veterans from all all walks of life get into if, yeah. if they're not careful right and a lot of times they get in trouble from the drinking it's kind of a it's a bad thing in the military that there's a lot of drinking that goes on and it just gets people in trouble yeah i had a guy on the on the show here and you probably know who he is he, he said he left the army and he was out of the army for a while and he thought and he, was, he had have a drinking issue and he said well, well i'll go in the navy maybe it'll be better than i'm going and i'm sitting i'm listening to this you went in the navy <laughs> <laughs> to get away from drinking <laughs> I, said, I, I think you made a bad choice yes sir uh, but the, the one thing about in the navy is that you're not allowed to drink on like if you're on a ship you're not supposed to drink uh, alcohol when you're out there and i said you're not supposed to not supposed to. <laughs> but I, I did never see I, ne- I never saw anybody intoxicated while i was on the ship now marijuana that's a different story <laughs> oh so you're allowed to have marijuana but not alcohol <laughs> well, i don't know what they were allowed to but they was t- t- certainly there <laughs> and uh but the thing is is that with the navy once once they they get off the ship they go ashore it's all readily available and and of course the places that a, a navy ship's going to park <laughs> um you're usually right in the red zone <laughs> or yes, wherever that is and um it's all there and uh but i mean i was never a drinker so i I never went with the crowd but i saw it that i'd see them you know, getting ready to get on the liberty launch to go back to the ship and they want me to help them get on that ship on that launch I said, i'm not gonna help you <laughs> i didn't put you in <laughs> that's cruel to me wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> probably so <laughs> but but it is it is an issue that yeah and of course uh, a lot of our vietnam veterans have come back drug use in vietnam was a serious issue and so now they end up in, in a in a prison somewhere they're fixing to get out they don't know where to go a lot of times in these situations family has abandoned them and so here's a guy by the name of barry and he has his big heart and he wants to help yes sir so you started this ministry and and you're making a little progress here. These things are going, but you're talking about uh, buying a farm somewhere. Yes, sir. <laughs> do we do we know where the farm is yet? We're, we're thinking it'll probably be in Jefferson County. Jefferson County. Yes, sir. That's where okay. we're, we're looking at. Okay. And we're talking about uh, twenty acres, fifty acres, a thousand acres. Well, the, the start off with we're going to look for a uh, house with about five acres. Okay. And we'll use that for a while, as as and then save up some money as we go to to try to buy the farm eventually you know what you're going to find and, and maybe you've already looked into this and you're going to find it, it'd be about as cheap to buy a farm with 100 acres as five acres and you're probably right but right now <laughs> with the price of land going up yeah. it's, it's yeah. The, well uh, jefferson county is, is basically agricultural and yes, the, the tax base is agricultural and so land is at a premium over there but there's plenty of it <laughs> so uh so if you if you have these uh, veterans there on the farm and of course you're going to have to have transportation yes take them back and forth to the va or whatever services they may need or whatever so you're talking about some fundraising going on here yes sir so you got this plan and it's called a cardboard boat race right yes sir (laughs) now barry i'm looking at this i'm going you're going to take some cardboard boxes actually not even boxes when you give it to the whoever's going to do this they're going to build their own boat yes sir and you're going to put it on the water 
that's the plan. <laughs> now, I asked you before we went on the air, I said, have you actually seen this happen before? And you said, not personally. <laughs> but where'd you see it? YouTube. And that's, that's where you got the idea. Yes, sir. And uh, did they give results to the there on the YouTube as far as it, how it went? A lot of them do pretty good. Do they? It just <laughs> depends on how good you are building a cardboard boat. <laughs> okay. Now, are there rules about how this, does it have to be a square box or can they make it more like a boat? Oh, you can make it like a boat. Uh, you can decorate the boat. Uh, we've, we've got pictures on our website of, uh, of the UPS uh, USPS boat, uh, pirate ship, uh, <laughs> and then we've seen even on some of the YouTubes we've seen a a, a storm a tr- stormtrooper bo- boat, uh, a, a, you know, an aircraft carrier, uh, a tugboat. Oh we've seen goodness. all sorts of other things. Now this is going to happen April the thirtieth, eight thirty a.m. at McClay Garden State Park. Yes, sir. Okay, tell us uh, since you got a rush about March the. 21st. 21st. So what do people need to do if they want to be involved in this? Well, you can either uh, go to our website, BoatRaceTally.com, or you can go on Facebook and send us a message and we'll get with you. Okay. Now, the, this cardboard, you are purchasing the cardboard. Yes, sir. And, and you're more than welcome to use your own cardboard, but we'll okay. have four by eight sheets of uh, cardboard. And how would a person go about getting this? Well, after you register, we're going to yeah. order it. After we get an account of who, okay. how many we've got, and then we're going to order enough, and then some extra as well. All right. What does it take for a person to register? Uh, it's sixty dollars, and you can either have a uh, a build before you before the race, or you can register for the build the day of. The build the day of will give you three sheets of cardboard and some duct tape, and you build a boat <laughs> the day of, and just expect to get wet. Right. Okay, so now is there a different price between the the day of and the, and the sixty dollars for either one? So the person who would would get the cardboard in advance would have an advantage because they could maybe waterize this thing some way or another. Correct. You can you can use a, a waterproof glue, the uh, the out exterior glue. Uh, you can use latex paint. And you can still use your, your uh, duct tape if you want. Because the person who's who's coming that day, they're not going to be able to paint it. No, the paint wouldn't dry in time. Right. We're trying to keep the lake uh, in good shape. <laughs> okay. We're not trying to kill the fish that day. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> so, But now there's also, uh, I see another page here that has to do with sponsorships. And um, you've got different uh, things, of platinum, gold, silver, bronze. And friends, well, tell us about that. Well, with uh, with this being a fundraiser, we're trying to get the the cost of this uh, sponsors to help pay for it. Uh, we've got the platinum for thirty five hundred, the gold for two thousand, silver for a thousand, bronze for five hundred, and friends of the race for two hundred fifty. So you're looking for people who want to help veterans and and. Uh, see your vision for what it is that you're wanting to do and they're willing to step up and put up some big bucks here that's correct and, uh, now it says here one it says platinum one so you're looking for just one person to do the 3500 yes sir but what if you had 20 that wanted to do that well the problem with that is the platinum gets the biggest advertising so we're uh, only one to do one person for uh-huh. one, one business for that so somebody else wanted to give you five thousand dollars instead of the thirty five hundred dollars what we do with them we take the donation <laughs> <laughs> so this this platinum is first come first serve yes sir pretty yeah. much so so you you put up a thirty five hundred dollars you get to platinum somebody else comes along and puts up ten thousand dollars no platinum for them but they get to be a part of it we'll and, give them a gold sponsorship or <laughs> or we'll let them do the next year <laughs> All right, uh, it's, it's always. Uh, you look like you sit down and, and thought this thing out. And uh, now, are, are these proceeds going to go toward purchasing the farm? Uh, whatever's extra over the, the the amount we need for the race, yes, sir. Okay, and uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I would just love to see this just, just go well for you and just, just make a whole lot of money. We hope it does, and, and, and also we're having a home built boat show. So if you've built a boat, we would love to have you come show it. 
uh, Boat Builder Central from uh, down in Vero Beach is coming up, and they sponsored the, the, the Home Built Boat Show part. And so these boats won't be raced or in, in the water. They're just there for people to look at. Not this year. Uh, next year, we're going to look at trying to put them in the water as well. Yeah. Well, you got to learn so much from this year. <laughs> yes, sir. We, we, we figured we'd take it. And next yeah. year, we're probably going to have the, yeah. the under 18-year-old, under 18, uh, able to race in it. But this year, we want to – keep it as safe as possible and, yes. and learn some lessons from well, it. Let's talk about this safety aspect of it. I know you've, you've, you've thought this through. So what are you doing to make sure that everybody stays safe? One of the rules is you have to have a life preserver on. If you're going to get on the water, you must have your life preserver. Uh, we don't provide them. I'll have some extras out there, but uh, just prepare with a life preserver. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we're going to have some rescue boats out there. Uh, we're, we're looking for lifeguards to uh, be on the boat as well, just so in case somebody's struggling in the water even though they've got a life jacket on sure. you never know what they, they might panic or something like that right, right so we want to be prepared for all aspects of okay. it so all this is uh, very volunteer intensive what you're describing here yes sir how, how are we doing with volunteers so far uh we could use some <laughs> <laughs> okay. well let's just kind of start taking a little inventory here of, of things that we need to tell this radio audience that they could do to help get involved one is to be one of these sponsors platinum gold silver bronze or just friends of okay. yes sir two you need to register and be a part of it and that's 60 bucks to be able to register as such and then just volunteer because you're going to need people to help with parking, uh, helping to get the boats launched, uh, people who know how to blow a whistle. I mean, <laughs> the, the park is going to have some volunteers to uh, okay. drive their, their tram. They've got okay. a, a, a tow vehicle that services a sure. tram. Um, but then we do need some volunteers. We've got a, a church, a Thomasville Road Baptist Church, is going to be helping us with uh, the youth. They're going to be helping us with uh, – cooking or, or or serving food okay so we're gonna have food out there to, ah. to, to sell so that's another side of this the yes food so you're gonna have concessions we will have uh hamburgers probably or okay. hot dogs okay uh, some chips some drinks uh and we'll have some snacks out there as well for during the race now what are some of the other ways that you are helping to promote this we're doing a lot on Facebook. WCTV signed on as a sponsor. They're going to help us out with some advertising and some online, inter- uh, some on TV interviews, hopefully. Okay. Now, how are we doing on radio? Uh, radio, I'm here with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there are other places yes, sir. To, to go, and I can help you with some of that. That, that, that way I'm sure we'll give you some time to be able to, to come in and, and do some interviews and, and let people know what you're doing. Because you, you look at, well, April, see, it's April 30th, right? Yes, sir. We got, I think, two months. Yeah, that, that sounds like it's a long way off, but it's really not. Yeah. It, it'll be here very, very quick. And next thing you know, you'll you'll turn around. And you go. It's time to do it. And uh, I know about events. Events are one of those things that there's a lot of things that you can do ahead. Some things you really can't do ahead. So you want to try to figure out as many things that you can do in advance to get those done and get them out of the way. <laughs> and then those things that they can't be done sometimes until the day of. You say, well, try to get those things organized the best way you can. Try to get good people. To take responsibility for things and cross your fingers. And yes, sir. Hang on. That's right. Because <laughs> it, it can sometimes it can get a little little fuzzy. Yes, times. it can. And, and, uh, but it sounds to me like that um, you're 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 looking through this thing and trying to figure out now what could possibly go wrong. Oh, it could <laughs> rain. <laughs> but they're going to get wet anyway. Yeah, but if there's lightning, lightning right, we've got to keep have, it safe. Safety's yeah, first in this event. Can't have lightning. Let's, cannot have lightning. No, we've we got to keep everybody safe. Is this going to be in the morning? Uh, it's going to be in the morning. There's yeah. a wedding that afternoon that we've got to be quiet for <laughs> afterwards be, as well as they don't want well, people blocking the wedding. Well, but done well to do it in the mornings because generally these storms come up in the afternoon generally not always that's correct but most of the time they're later in the day and so you probably should be done because we look at a couple hours for the whole event uh yeah we're going to start at 10 o'clock with the races the the build the day of builds will start about uh 9 30 okay and then the, the first race will be at 10 o'clock and we're hoping to be done by one now what does a person uh, get if they win well, we haven't determined that yet. We're still looking into that. Uh, we're probably going to get some medals because okay. uh, this is a team event. So you're going to have at least two in each boat. Oh, I see. Up to six. Okay. So uh, we've got to be prepared in case six people win. We've got to be prepared if. So there's no, they don't win no money. 
No. It's just the fact that you say, hey, I won. That's correct. And I got a medal. <laughs> hey, bragging rights are important. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds to me like it's going to be a, a, a fun thing. So this is this is your first of the, the endeavors of fundraisers. Uh, yes, sir. This is the inaugural. But you wouldn't be opposed to somebody just saying, hey, I, I'd like to send you a donation. Oh, no. We take donations okay. on our website, uh, warriorsrestoration.org okay. is our, our main website. And okay. that's... Uh, that's warriorsrestoration.org. Okay. Warriorsrestoration.org. You can uh, go there, and I'm sure you get a lot of other information as well. Yes, sir. About the event and about uh, the, the ministry that you have. Uh, well, you've taken it on. <laughs> yes, sir. You've heard the call of God, and you got a heart for these veterans, and you want to help them. And uh, is, is the, the concept of the farm, is that kind of like the, the main thing that you're seeing? Yes, pretty much that and that and the, the tiny homes. Okay, uh, that that's well, that kind of goes together. It does. It a, does. A farm and then tiny homes. Now these tiny homes, I've seen those on uh, Facebook and places like that. Are we talking about that, or are we talking about a shed that you modified? Oh no, we're talking about uh, site built tiny homes. Site built tiny homes. Yes, sir. On, those, a, on a slab. I see because yes, they're, they're a little pricey for what I for what I saw. They are a lot of them uh, that the you see on Facebook are on wheels. And, and we're not looking for that. We're looking for a permanent home for these uh, these veterans. Okay, and of course, maybe by the time you get to that point, you might have some uh, some of the local builders and different people around that might come along and partner with you and, and uh, uh, help you. One of the things we're looking at is actually having a uh, builder competition. So when we get the farm, we're going to reach out to the uh, the the builders and uh, see if we can have a competition to see who can build. The uh, best looking tiny home or the best functioning tiny home or I love however you. they want to go. I love your optimism. <laughs> you, you're very optimistic. I like that. I try to be. You know, and that's good. That's good. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. If you've just joined us, uh, Barry Walker is my guest today. And he is a man with a vision. He is uh, feels the call of God to help our veterans. It's called Warriors Restoration. And uh, Ecclesiastes four ten is for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. That's good. But as you know, uh, Pastor King likes gospel music. But today we're going to play something a little different. It's not necessarily gospel music, but it is by the Elk Ridge Boys. It's called "This Is America." Thank God for our veterans, our vets. Of this land, and we take our stand. We love America, and that's one of the reasons why we love our vets and those who are willing to go put themselves in harm's way that we might have the freedoms that we have here in America. And uh, a lot of times, our vets are suffering, and a lot of times, people are not even aware of it. But praise God! But Barry Walker, a man with a vision, he wants to help, and uh, he needs us to step up and help us with a few of these things. And we'll talk about them in just a moment, but I do want to remind you that I am the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry. We're located at 720 Capital Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza, and we love visitors. Why don't you come worship with us today? you got plenty of time. We start at 11.05, and you've got plenty of time to get ready and come on to church, and uh, we'd love to see you. FRCM.us is the website there. You can find that. Also, I want you to join me Monday through Friday for the daily broadcast, the gospel on the radio broadcast. I just teach the Word of God. And uh, that's Monday through Friday here on 94.1. And then on Saturday night, it's the Saturday night gospel sing with me, Pastor Jack King. Have a great time on that show. We play a lot of great Southern gospel music. As I say, the best music on the planet (laughs) right there. So make sure you join me for that as well. And we do appreciate you. You can find these shows on the podcast. If you go to your podcast, just type in Pastor Jack King, Tallahassee. There's a whole bunch of them that'll come up. This is show number 1059. If you want to listen to it again or share it with a friend, you can do that. But you'll find a lot of the uh, talk shows and the uh, daily broadcast there on the podcast. Unfortunately, we can't put the music one on there. I wish we could. But uh, you can find a lot. You know, uh, if you are traveling somewhere and, uh, 
you bring that podcast up and just put it on your iPhone, just lay it down on the seat, and you can hear it just fine. I tried it the other day. I was amazed. <laughs> and it just, it sounds just fine. So you can find all kinds of different shows, lots of good content for you, a lot of the great interviews that we've done over the years. But Barry Walker is a, a man with a vision for vets, and he's founded a ministry called Warrior Restoration. Now, where did the name come from? Well, we're, we're, we're helping veterans out. So these are warriors. Uh, and we're also helping restore them. Yeah, but see, I know how difficult it is to come up with names. They're not always easy, but it's funny. It's, it's when it clicks, it clicks, and you go, wow. <laughs> That's what I've been looking for. It only took me a year or something like that to, to, to find a good name for a ministry. But That's a good one. Warriors Restoration, because restoration is what you are wanting to do. You're wanting to help these veterans and I'm assuming you're kind of thinking they kind of got off track a little bit and they just need a little TLC in their life, maybe a little tranquil setting like you're talking about with a farm. Now, are you a farmer by any chance? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We uh, we talked to IFAS, uh, the, the Florida uh, Agricultural Extension on each county. Okay. And uh, the one in Jefferson County said that they would help us out and uh, basically teach us how to farm. Wow. Now, Jefferson County, I'm thinking, uh, probably got some peanuts over there. Maybe it's, uh, some watermelons. It's some wa- oh, yeah, watermelons. That's right. Jefferson <laughs> County. Big watermelon festival. Montecella. Yes, sir. <laughs> Great time. And, uh, of course, you got a lot of cattle in, in, in Jefferson County. There are some cattle yeah, over there. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so so that means hay is a big thing. Yes, that, sir. In your, and so, yeah, that's uh, – so do you see any of those things in, in your farming adventure here? Uh, our, our The president of the board wants to put some cattle on there. Uh, okay. he, he grew up doing farming, uh, doing cattle down south. Uh, but the, the big thing we were looking at is, uh, is uh, vegetables. And uh, we, we think that would be a good thing for these uh, veterans because it would provide us some sustenance. Yeah, and also, uh, it's what they call truck gardens. You can, you can have a, 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 a small plot of land. It's amazing how much you can grow on a small plot of land in a garden. And then they can take them out there near the road. I mean, if you're a place where you have some road access and set up a little stand and sell fruit. And it's amazing how quickly you can do it. Um, I grew up on a farm, and so f- gardens were a big thing. And my daddy, would, would he would he we'd start off with one garden, and then we'd, we'd do the we call the tobacco beds because we raise tobacco. So we'd have the beds where they had the we grow the plants with the tobacco, and then after we planted the tobacco, then he he'd take those things and plow them up, and he'd put gardens in that. And man, you, it's amazing how much you can grow on a small plot of land. If you go over here at uh, FAMU, and I think they've closed it down for a while, but they had a little place right off Orange Avenue there where they what they call raised gardens. Yes, sir. I saw and it, that. It's just a little square. <laughs> They can raise all kinds of stuff in there. My wife does a raised garden at her house. They work out great. Yes, sir. So you do have a little farming experience. You've got a your wife can do it for you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, farming is a it's a it's a it's an art and it's a science. And you get these old timers that grew up doing this or that, they just know how to do it. But your average person has no clue. We are lost today on how, if we had yeah. to live without our phones, we would it, be lost. It would be a real serious thing if, if we got in a situation to where we had to to be able to raise our own food. That had to be a lot of training that goes on. But Some the, of these old timers have to get out of their, their house and help us out. <laughs> you know, the problem is we're losing a lot of those old timers. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, yeah. and it's funny, I've sent this to my brother. Uh, he lives in Kentucky. That's where I'm from. And I said, David, I need to come up here and uh, have you school me uh, about raising a garden. He looked at me and says, we grew up on a farm. I said, yeah, but that was like 50 years ago. And things have changed. Yeah, and my daddy was doing all the work. I, I mean, I would be out there picking the tomatoes and all that sort of thing, but I don't remember. Well, I, I helped him plant them, but I mean, preparing the land and all this sort of thing, that's all stuff that has these people who know what they're doing because not every piece of soil is the same. Not at all. <laughs> no. You got to fertilize. You got to know what kind of fertilize you got to use and, and all this sort of thing. And what will grow here won't grow over there. Well, and it, what you plant on it might, makes a difference on what you need to plant the next time. Right, right. But you could take a, a person who's uh, maybe never done this before. You put them out there and uh, they start seeing things grow. It can do amazing things to the the mental state of a person. 
That's <laughs> that's your vision, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, have you ever? Do you know any place that's done this this way? Have you have you seen this? No, uh, we we really don't. This is a uh, this is everybody says that I talk to about this. It says it's a unique idea. Well, it may, um, it may be a pilot program. Well, and that's that's a long term vision of ours. Yeah. Is not just to do this here, but to take this other places as well. Right, right. We got to start small. That's why we're looking at the first place yeah. being a, a five acre farm mm-hmm. with a little house on it and and grow it from there. Just like we're we're growing these veterans back into. Uh, so, if you were going to just put a figure in your mind. So well, we're probably going to need how much are we talking about? Wow! When we when we did the uh, the the budget for it, we were estimating we're probably going to need about I think it was one point five millions to to get started. One point five million. Yes, sir. That sounds like a lot. It is. But then again, I serve a guy who owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I heard somebody say, well, just tell him to sell a couple of cows for you. <laughs> <laughs> a couple hundred, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do that. But the thing about it is it, it's, it's the ability to let people see the vision. That's, that's really what we're talking about here. It sounds to me like the people of the Thomasville Road Baptist Church, you shared this with them. Yes, sir. And they said, hey, Barry, we want to be a part of this. And so we just need to multiply that across radio land here, the Wave 94 audience, people who are, you're a veteran yourself, or you, or you know a veteran, or maybe one of your children are vets, or, and you just, you see the need here. Because it's a shame to think that a, that a man or a woman who, who left our shores to go fight in a foreign war someplace and come back damaged for whatever reason, and to think that we would not be willing to say thank you for what you did. And actually, you know, it's, it's one thing to just say that, to say thank you. It's another thing to put action. <laughs> and uh, nothing quite speaks like a donation. That's correct. Yeah. We're not looking for uh, for words here. It's time for action. It's time to yeah. help these veterans out. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, uh, now you're younger than I am, but uh, I served during the Vietnam era. I was not in Vietnam but we weren't treated real well. <laughs> no, sir. I, I, I've seen the videos of that. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's hard. And, and when things begin to change as far as people's expression, and I hear this a lot of people will say to them, well, thank you for your service. Well, we, we, you know, this has probably been, what, maybe 20 years we've been hearing that. And that's, that's great. It really is. But for old timers like myself, it's hard to receive that because of the way we were treated during our era. This is a way. This is a way to speak volumes uh, to to those uh, veterans who are who are suffering from whatever situation that has occurred in their life because of their military service. The fact that they were willing to put their life on the line. I think we can speak here. So I'm just encouraging. You to, and give them the website again so that if somebody wants to make a donation www.warriorsrestoration.org now right now are you the only staff uh the only full-time staff yes sir are we've got a board of directors of uh three uh, and we're also looking for board uh directors uh board members okay to help us out as well really? yes sir wow now what would a person have to do to sign up for that just give me a call i mean there's a process they'd have to go through oh yes sir i mean you want to make sure that they're person who really is qualified to do this sort of thing yes sir so but but if you are somebody and you've got some background in management or something like that in fundraising fundraising <laughs> uh, yes well, i'll tell you what that's a that's an art yes sir <laughs> it I, is i'm uh, learning that <laughs> well I, I know some people who are really really good at it and then there's some people like me that's <laughs> that's, mm. that's been a struggle uh, but again it's it's a matter of, of planting vision helping people to see the vision of what you're doing and so the better that you're able to articulate it and and formulate that in your own mind and heart the better it will be as far as having people who will sign up with you and 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 want to be a part well i I, one of the reasons it took me so long to start this up was because i'm not a great speaker but i'll tell you what the god that i serve will make you what he needs you to be 
I don't know. You sound pretty good on the radio to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then this is his first time being on the radio. Uh, well, I might have just turned this whole show over to him. He's got a great, <laughs> a great, a great voice to, to, uh, well, thank you. to, to do broadcasting. And, and you can be doing more of these interviews, so he might as well get used to it. <laughs> yes, sir. This is, a, this is a great test for yeah. me. Uh, Barry, tell him uh, my number five rule for my guest on the uh, be nice to each other. No, no, that's number four. Okay. Number, number five is you have to stay in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's all you got to do. Just stay in the microphone where people can hear you and then just say what's on your heart. And this is what you've been doing here uh, on the broadcast. You've just been telling people your heart. So now you got a few minutes here. I'm going to give you a chance to do that. Share your vision with this audience. My vision is that uh, we help these veterans out. We give them a place to live forever if they need to. Uh, you know, God doesn't want us to just sit back and do nothing. He wants us to, to serve him, to bring people to Christ. And we can't bring these people to Christ, these veterans, without having a food, food in their belly, having a roof over their head, and clothed and loved. That's the true way to bring them to Christ. Okay. And the thing about it is that... Uh you're looking to do all those sort of things. I have a feeling that as you begin to launch this thing, that your concepts are going to begin to take focus and form. And it may not be exactly the way you see it right now. And that's usually the way things are. Yes, sir. Uh, I tell people a lot of times on, on the show, this is an expression I use quite often. I say, well, how do, you, how do you launch a dream? And I say, well, you put one foot in front of the other. And you follow God in it, and God will begin to show you things, and, and he'll show you, well, that's not going to work. This is not going to work. But he'll, he begins to help you develop it as, as you go. And uh, it's an amazing thing when you get on a journey with, with God because it always ends up being more fun than you ever thought it would be. Sometimes it can be stressful. <laughs> it can be. And uh, uh, I think you're going to probably – well, I don't want to. I don't want to speak negative here. I don't I'd never do that. But uh, I think this uh, boat race is going to stretch you. <laughs> <laughs> it already is. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just have a feeling this is going to stretch you a little bit. But, uh, but you'll learn from it. You'll learn so much. But, but our prayer is well, it's kind of twofold. We want it to be a success. Yes, sir. But we want it to be safe. Yes, sir. We want it to be safe. And that's very much concerning to all of us. That uh, everybody will be safe. It sounds to me like you're you're taking the right steps to ensure that. So let's we may have some new folks that have just joined us. So tell us what is this crazy idea that you've got here? Well, <laughs> we needed a fundraiser that spoke and people remembered. So we uh, we searched a little bit online and, and came up with a cardboard boat race. Uh, we figured Tallahassee's got enough gallows and balls. We wanted to stand out and do something a little zany, a little, uh, something that people would remember. <laughs> Warriors Restoration put on a cardboard boat race. Okay. And uh, so we searched online, found this, and, and it, we just latched on the idea and said this will be fun. So tell the people what they need to do to, to be a part of it. So if you want to register, we'd appreciate that at, at uh, BoatRaceTally.com. It's $60 for registration. You can register for the, uh, the open class, which is a build before you uh, come boat. Uh, you can put latex paint on it and, and use wood glue to put the cardboard together with and layers and uh or you can build one the day of uh and we'll have the cardboard for you and uh duct tape and you just cut it out and build it however you want to you get two hours to do that on the day now, of. are you going to build one of these beforehand and try it out oh yes sir <laughs> yes sir because i just can't imagine a cardboard box floating at all but uh you said you saw it on youtube so <laughs> there are plenty of them and they are beautiful they've got some that are just awesome to yeah. watch so you wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go over here to walmart and just just grab a box and put it out there <laughs> you can do that we'll laugh at it's you but we'll laugh for a <laughs> So. <laughs> there's people that do it but it's yeah, funny yeah so okay but now this sealant that you're going to put around it is going to help the longevity of the box without yeah. a doubt we definitely recommend painting it uh using some exterior wood glue and uh that re really helps putting the layers in putting the uh some joints in there uh <laughs> and you can use cardboard tubes to uh, make your your edges 
So there's lots of ways to you can do it. I highly recommend you go on YouTube and Instructables. Now, now how long or how far is the race? About a hundred to two hundred yard uh, feet. Okay, so it's not too far for the for the for the build before show. Uh, the ones that you build the day of, we're only probably going to do about fifty feet, and we're going to keep them in the shallow swimming area. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you're having some doubt about the seaworthiness. Of some Just of the these. day of <laughs> the, the ones that are built before, I have no doubt they'll do good. Yeah. So, so basically, from the shore to a buoy that you'll have set up out there, I guess. Yes, sir. And they, they race out, and then they turn around, and they come back. Yes, sir. And that's that's it. That's that's the end of the race. Yes, sir. well, that's that's the first heat. Uh-huh. If you win, we'll have some. You race against somebody else later. If your if your box is still floating, right? Hey, we'll give you some time to patch it up. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about the. You mentioned the balloon that you're going to have attached to all of the boats. Well, we're going to put a. Uh, we're going to make sure you have a. One of the rules is that you have a milk jug okay. tied with a 30 foot piece of string, so that if your boat does sink, we can recover it, so we're not polluting the waters. Okay, so I, so I, I made the whole thing up about the balloon. I th- well, it's close enough. It's a milk jug. Uh, so the milk jug, okay, with so the, the cap on, it should float. Okay, so the so the milk jug, if it if the boat sinks, the the, it, the milk jug goes with it. Yeah, that, that's one of the, the one of the rules is the milk jug has to be able to float up. If oh, I see. Stinks. So I'm thinking the milk jug gets a balloon. That's where I got that. That is. Yeah, okay. That's, okay. that's where I assume. So you it's got an it from. empty milk jug. Boats on the bottom of, of the of the lake. The the plastic jug is now floating on the water, so you can retrieve the ruins. <laughs> yes, and we're going to have boats out there. Uh, some John boats out there too, okay. uh, with a lifeguard on it, just to to recover the boats as well as recover people that may uh, be floating. Okay, so we got just about a minute left here. So let's go ahead. It's uh, registered by March 31st. It's going to happen on the 30th of April, 8.30 a.m. at McClay Gardens. Yes, sir. And you register by going to uh, Warrior Restoration? No, BoatRaceTally.com. Boat, okay, BoatRaceTally.com. You can go there and check that out, <laughs> and you can be a part of this. It's $60 registration fee. Now, how many people are in the boat? You can have two people up to six people. Really? Yes, Six sir. Six people in a boat. There's some of them that do. Well, you've seen 12 people in a boat on YouTube. And they're rowing. they just got regular paddles, and they're just yes, rowing. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is crazy. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. It's going to be fun. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you have privileged us to be able to talk about these things here on the radio. Father, I pray over this event. I pray for safety. I pray, God, that uh, no harm would come to anyone. And Father God, it'd be fun, and it would be effective, and it'd be a, a wonderful fundraiser for this organization. Father, bless them. Lord, use them for your glory, we pray. All these things, Lord, we pray for you. We pray for our country. We pray for your kingdom, O oh God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Barry, it's been great to have you on the show. It's been great to be here, I Jack. appreciate Thank you. you. And uh, we'll be looking to hear about all the results. <laughs> and we're just praying that God will bless it and it'll be used for his glory. But until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.